Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about SpriteKit and working on our game. And, uh, you know, in the last video I talked about setting up the camera node and working with SK Camera Node. Um, in this video, what I'd like to do is follow up on the last two videos and start creating the scrolling background, okay? So, so far, you know, we've got a camera and it follows the player. But the you know as the player moves forward he falls off the screen right so um so what we need is we need another background right so to get started um what i'd like to do is i'd like to make a file to represent the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to ios source swift file and maybe we'll call it a background okay you call, maybe we should call it a landscape but uh yeah why don't we call it a landscape Maybe that makes more sense, right? Call it a landscape, right? So what this file is going to be is it's going to be an SK node, okay? And the reason why is these landscapes, they might contain a lot of content. So imagine, you know, if our game looked something like this, but you had a bunch of coins in here and some monsters and some, you know, background imagery, um, like trees and stuff, and then a ground plane and you know, some platforms or something, right? All the platforms and the coins and the monsters and any of the objects that we can interact with and the, the background elements or the stuff that makes up the art of the scene, um, those are going to be like child objects of the actual landscape. And like I said in the previous video, we want the camera to move forward like this. And when a landscape moves out of view, we want to move it over to the other side and then we want to remove all the coins and the monsters in the background and change them up with new coins and monsters and other you know elements so that the the background or the landscape can look like it's always changing like it's always different so it you know it'll have the effect of being um you know uh endless right we'll be able to you know have a have a constantly changing environment right it can be randomly generated okay so if we make this an SK node, we can add other sprite nodes to it as child objects, right? So by making a class, we can kind of set up a system where this, you know, each background or landscape section, we can, you know, send a method to it or call one of its methods and say like, hey, why don't you, um, you know, change up your content, right? Um, and we can also add some layers to layer the elements that we put in there, right? So, um, you know, and the layers would just be other SK nodes, right? Okay, so, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have an SK node, and its reference point will be the lower left corner. Okay, so uh, let's make a new file here. We call it landscape. And what we'll need to do first is import sprite kit, and then we'll define a class called landscape. Okay, and this will be a subclass of SK node. Okay. And for right now, we'll just have a colored background. And every time we recycle it, we'll give it a method to change the color. And later we can swap, swap that out for some artwork and add other features, right? So what we'll do is we'll give it, um, we'll say let background equal SK sprite node, okay? And since we have a variable here, we'll have to include an initializer, right? Where we initialize this background property. Okay. Um, also, when we initialize this, uh, we might want to pass in some other information, right? Um, if we look at this, you know, our, our landscape needs to know the size of the area here, right? Because we're going to have to know where to place objects within this. And when we move this from one end to the other, you know, the distance that we move it is going to be based on the size of the landscape, right? So when we initialize this node, why don't we initialize it with a size? So we'll say CG size like this, okay? And then we're going to get that warning here because we need to include in it with coder, so we'll put that in. And then why don't we add a comment here, right? So we got our in its section, you know, and you can put some properties in here. We've got our background property. And then now we're going to get an error saying we don't have super, right? So let's, um, 
let's set, uh, you know what we should do is we should probably save the size because we'll want to look at this. And SK node doesn't have a size property. So we'll say let size, oops, let's spell that right. Size equal CG size. And then what we'll do is we'll say size equals, you know, size. And actually we'll need to put, we'll need to put self in front of this size because um, this is going to be our class property. And this size is the local variable that is passed in through the initializer. Okay, so we got that set up. Now we need to um, to create the background. Okay, so this is just going to be an SK sprite node. So what we'll do is we'll say you know background equals SK sprite node, and we'll initialize with a color and a size, right? Um, so for color right now, why don't we do this? Why don't we um, Why don't we, uh, let me fix this. This guy's kind of bugging me. Why don't we um, set our color here to uh, to that and then set the size to this, right? There we go. Let me tab those, okay? Okay, so for the color right here, why don't we set up a random color, right? So we'll need to put a color in there. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we just say, um, let's do this. Let's, let's say let hue equal, um, let's do a CG float arc for random mod a thousand divided by a thousand, right? Okay, so what does that do? Well, here we're going to generate a random number, which will be zero to 999. Okay, so this mod 1000 will you know, take whatever random number is generated here and put it in the range of 0 to 999. And this is going to return a, um, a uint, 32. So in order to use it with color, I need to have a CG float. So I'm going to just convert this to a CG float. And if I use color, um, UI color, um, and what I want to do is I want to do hue. I don't know why this guy doesn't want to give me the the full initializer for UI color, but essentially what I want is hue, uh, saturation. I want to put the hue here, do saturation of one, brightness of one, and alpha, I need a comma, alpha of one, okay? So that's kind of long there, but uh, but that's what we want to do. We want to do, uh, you know, color is hue, and I want the hue here. The value here for hue is the color. So saturation is how bright the color is, or I mean, how, how much color there is, right? If there's saturation of zero, it's going to be a gray. Um, brightness is how bright the color is. And alpha is the transparency, but sat but but hue is is the color. And each one of these is a range of zero to one. So what I want is I want a random number between 0 and 1. So if I take um, arc4 random mod 1,000, I'm going to get a number from 0 to 99. And if, if I divide by 1,000, it'll turn it into essentially a number from 0 to 0.999. Okay? And that should be good for hue. Okay, so I'll take hue and I'll put it here, this variable, and we should get a random color. And then now we can set up our, um, and this should be the size of the, um, of the, uh, you know, of this SK node. Like we pass a size in here, right? So now we need to set up our super. So let's say super in it. And then um, we've made a background SK node, but we'll have to add it to the scene. So why don't we do a setup here? And we'll say, uh, you know, mark setup function setup right and then i think we're in pretty good pretty good arrangement here right that sh that kind of makes sense right and then when we do a setup we can say you know add child uh, background okay now the reference point for this C this C uh, sk node is you know the sk node essentially is you know just a point Right, and you it, but it, it's a parent object, so we can add other objects to it, but it doesn't have any size. I mean, I gave it a size variable here, so it kind of knows how big, you know, it should be. 
but it actually doesn't have any, you know, any dimensions, right? So we can think of this, the, the reference point of, the, of this SK node as being the lower left corner, okay? The center point of this SK sprite node is going to be the center of this thing. So if we pass in a size that's like, you know, 500 by 500, then the middle of this background node right here, which is 500 by 500, the middle will be 250 and 250, 250x and 250y, right? So what I'd like to do to position this within the size and make it appear that the reference point for this SK node is in the lower left corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say background dot anchor point, right, equals CG point. Um, and what we'll do is we'll set this to 0, 0, right? So if I put the anchor point at 0, 0, that will move it to the lower left corner of this background node, right? Okay. Okay, so that's that's pretty good there. Okay, we'll have to do a little more work here, but, but we've got this organized into this landscape class, so we can always come back and, and edit that later, right? But that got that started. Um, now what we want to do is in our game scene, we want to create two background nodes or two landscape nodes, right? Remember, just like we have here. So we've got one and then two, and we can use our class to create two instances of, of this, right? So what we'll do is we'll add an array here. We'll say var um, landscapes, right? Landscapes equals, right? Um, equals an array of landscape, right? So this is an array that contains landscapes and then putting the parentheses initializes the, the array, right? And what we'll need to do is we'll need to, you know, add or create landscapes and add them to this array, right? So um, we can do that anywhere. Um, maybe we'll do it this way. We'll go to setup here. Might be good to break this setup into different blocks, right? We could set up uh, the player, set up the ground, set up the camera, set up the landscape, right? And we'll just do it here for now. We can refactor later, right? So we got two landscapes. Might as well use a for loop. Let's say for i in zero, while i is less than two. And what we'll do is we'll say um, let landscape equal, you know, our landscape class, uppercase L, right? And when we type the parenthesis here, we get the two initializers, which is initialize with coder and in it with size. And our size is going to be size, which is the size that we set over here, right? So that's the size of our scene, okay? So our landscapes are going to be the same size. And if we wanted to create landscapes that were larger, we could pass in a larger size, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll set the uh, position of the landscape. And what I want to do is set the initial positions of the two landscapes I'm creating so that one is on the right side, this corner at zero, and the other one on, you know, on the left side, I should say, and then this one on the right side with its lower left corner at the width of the first landscape or the width of the screen, right? So what we'll do is we'll say landscape, oops, uh, lowercase, landscape.position.x equals cg float i times size.width, okay? So um, i is an integer, and, you know, we can't multiply an integer times a cg float, like width is a cg float. We can take a look at it, right, cg float. So in order to get this integer and this CG float to work together, we got to cast one of them as, or this one as a CG float, okay? Um, so there we go. So we got this guy position, and then what we'll do is we'll say um, landscapes, that's our array, right, dot append our landscape. And there we go. And then we'll also need to um, add child. So we'll have to say add child landscape. Okay, so let's see how that works, right? We'll give it a test here. Um, let's 
Oh, so there's our two landscapes there, right? And one's moving past, and then the other one. And then now they don't recycle yet. We're going to have to add that in, right? We'll test it one more time, right? So I just made two random colors. So you can see it was yellow and red that time, but this time it's kind of a green and a pink, right? But it's kind of working there as our... our we can't see our player because of the Z index, right? So he's actually behind the landscapes, okay? Um, so anyway, that, that should be pretty good for this video, and we'll come back and fix a few things in the next one. Um, but essentially what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure the landscape falls behind the player by setting the Z index, and then we're going to move this ground object out of this scene here and put it in the landscape so the landscape has its own ground object, okay? And then that will make, you know, make this a little bit cleaner code here and make our landscape a little more useful, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching.